Welcome, my friends. You're listening to The Voice of the Eternal Gospel, a program brought to you by the Eternal Gospel Ministry, founded in 1992 by Seventh-day Adventist believers. This is a Christian program dedicated to bring you the prophetic fulfillment, warning, and revelations of the end times, and to promote the advancement of Christ in your life. Welcome, my friends, again to the voice of the eternal gospel. Let's continue today with this uh, series of presentations based on the book of Revelation. Before we do that, we're going to have a word of prayer, though. Let's pray, Pastor Terry. Father in heaven, we thank you that you have revealing to us the condition of us in Christianity. We ask that your Holy Spirit will speak to us and that he will make your word plain. Help us now search the scriptures and rightly divide the word of truth. We address our prayer to the most holy place, where Jesus is our great high priest, and where the final work of judgment is taking place. Amen. We ask now, abide with us and teach us. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Brother Patrick, would you read, please, Revelation 3, 16? We're going to pick up right where we left in the last program. 16. So then, because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. 17 says, right. Because thou sayest, I am rich, and increased with goods, and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched, and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked. Wow. Th this is a very desperate condition that Jesus is presenting over there, isn't it? Jesus, now, the faithful and true witness. Right, as we have been... Uh, sharing with our friends out there several times. Now, uh, what is all this means about when somebody is blind, can they see? No. No. Can they see the truth if somebody is blind? No. Well, it, the condition is, is so desperate because in the book of Revelation, and we're going to get into that later on in other programs, but the conditions is so bad that some people are blind and even are drunk with the wine of, you know, the great Babylon. Now, which is, you know, confusion, uh, 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 religions, uh, uh, doctrines of men instead of the Bible. So when somebody is blind and drunk, can they see the truth? Well, they might, they can't see the truth, but it Do might be also that they don't want to see the truth. Yeah. And so they want to be blind. Yeah, because... Through the power of the Holy Spirit, everything is possible, isn't it? Right. Isn't that what the Bible says? God so, wants us just to turn in another direction where we right. can see the light. Turning from sin, that's darkness. Repenting means turning from darkness to the light. I'm sure that you remember Jesus um, gave another warning. He said that many will be blind, leading other blinds. Hmm. The blind, yeah, the br blind leaders. Right. But yes, yes, Pastor. What is, it that, what is it that causes the blindness? We, because he says they're poor, they're wretched, they're miserable, they're blind and naked. And we need to look for a moment at the issue. Since you're talking about blindness, what is it that leads the blind? Now, the Bible talks about the blind lead the blind. They both fall into the ditch. Right. In the last days, the church of Laodicea is in a state of blind condition. But the Bible says they're blind to something. But what is it that the Christianity today, most of all of Christianity today, is blind to? Let's take a look in 2 Corinthians 4, 3 and 4. The Bible says, first of all, it says, if our gospel be hid. Mm -hmm. Now, don't miss this. If our gospel be hid. What gospel? People say, well, how could you say that with gospel being hid when everybody's preaching the gospel? Mm -hmm. What gospel is being hid from the people? First of all, it's the gospel of Christ and his righteousness. Amen. Because Romans 1, 16 and 17 says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, for as is written, the just shall live by faith. Right. So it's the gospel of Jesus Christ and his righteousness that is being hid 
or, or is, is not being brought before the people. There's prosperity gospel out here today. And it's there's a social miracle, gospel? Miracle gospel, <laughs> social gospel. Ecumenical gospel. Ecumenical gospel. <laughs> but there's not the gospel of Jesus Christ and his righteousness being revealed, which is here. And we're going to go a little step further, but Patrick had a comment. No, I just was wanting to say Christ's righteousness revealed in our life. Yes, revealed well, in our life, well, in our character. I like Revelation 14, 6. Yes, sir. For this end time, there is a special gospel. Absolutely. And, and that's, that's why we got the name of our ministry in our church. And I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel. And now, this, praise the Lord. This means that the gospel in the Old Testament is the same as in the New. It, it's yeah. everlasting. No. In, the Spanish, in the Spanish language, it says the eternal gospel, yes. meaning that it comes from way before it's before the throne <laughs> before the foundation of the worlds were right. even laid that's right now one thing is important here is that revelation 14 6 is talking about the everlasting gospel and the everlasting gospel is the same gospel of jesus christ that reveals his righteousness okay. but now is that true what is the purpose of the everlasting gospel look what the bible says in second thessalonians 2 14. Okay, it says whereunto he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. The purpose of the gospel is that we obtain to the glory or the character of Jesus Christ. Amen. Because the plan of redemption involves the restoration of man mentally, physically, and spiritually. Mm -hmm. That man might be brought back into harmony with the character of God. Amen. And God has chosen the gospel for this purpose. But going back over to 2 Corinthians 4, 3 and 4, we read something very important. If our gospel be hid, it is hidden in our loss. How are you lost when you say you have the gospel? Mm. Because you are blind to the what? You are blind to something. Look, it says, of whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the what? Image of God, should shine unto them. Amen. And so we find that the people are blinded to the character of God, even though they're hearing the gospel. Amen. And look what it will produce if the truth of the everlasting gospel will be preached around the world according to the uh, comments that this uh, Catholic Bible made. I uh -huh. want you to read this part where they speak about the everlasting gospel. Look what that will do, those three angels' messages. Read it says it right there, three angels proclaim imminent judgment uh -huh. on the pagan world, uh -huh. calling all peoples to worship God the Creator. Mm -hmm. Babylon, Rome, right. will fall and its supporters will be tormented forever. Everlasting good news that God's eternal reign is about to be gained. Amen. Wow. So, uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> the two things that I call my attention, and, and this is again, it's a Catholic Bible. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, published by the Catholic, you know, yes. uh, publications. And it, it is saying that this everlasting gospel, the eternal gospel, it's so powerful that they said over here that if it will be, when it will be and when it will be proclaimed, even the he said Babylon, Rome, he said Rome will fall. Yes. Praise. I, I'll say amen to that, isn't it? Amen. Of course, they were thinking about pagan Rome, but uh, we believe that you know pagan Rome as we have been studying. Rome has two phases. Two phases. Pagan right? and papal Rome. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I thought that was. Uh, uh, good to share with our friends because we are being accused many times Seventh-day Adventist believers has been accused that we are you know fanatic or when pe many people call send us letters saying you know you're just preaching messages that nobody else preach no we are preaching messages straight from the Bible and if we want to see and hear and that's the that's, that's why, that's the reason that Jesus bring this strong message of Laodicea. So we can wake up and repent. Isn't that, isn't that the purpose of the, bringing this everlasting gospel news? Yes. I, even Rome, even the Catholic Church says, it, it, it will fall. It will bring down the Babylon. Hmm. Yes. Um, we were talking about blindness, and Pastor Barry was talking about how People are blind to the gospel. Mm. And, but what was the last thing you said about that? Whom the God of this world has blinded minds which you believe not. And that the purpose of the gospel was to uh, 
for the development of character and meant for mentally, physically, and spiritually, that man might be restored into the image of God, and that 2 Thessalonians 2.14 says he called to buy our gospel to the obtaining of that glory. And then why are people blind to that gospel? They're because they are, they are not taking, in the ca taking on character. Okay. So, uh, when, when somebody is blind, we know they cannot see it, as you mentioned. I want, to, I want to bring out another point so you can okay. see a better picture of this issue of blindness dealing okay. with character. Okay. Notice here in Second Peter, First Peter chapter 2, chapter 1. Let's look here at verses, not verses, we'll start with verse 5 and go to verse 9. Watch this very carefully. It says, now this is because if we, if we are really experiencing Christ's righteousness, we'll be partakers of the divine nature. And I want you to see this in verse 4. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these we might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And besides this giving all diligence, add to your faith, what? Virtue. And to virtue, what? Knowledge. The knowledge here means not only knowledge in written form or book form, it also refers to the knowledge of Christ's character based on 2 Corinthians 4, 6. Knowledge meaning to take on character. It says temperance, and, with, and to temperance, patience, and to patience, godliness. And to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, charity. And if these things be in you and abound, that ye they make you that ye shall neither be barren, no unfruitful in the what? Knowledge, knowledge or the Christ. character of our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm. It says, but he that lack of these things is what? Blind. Mm. What? What is the blind condition? You lack virtue. You lack knowledge. You lack temperance. You lack patience. You lack godliness. You lack brotherly kindness towards one another. Goes on and says, but he that lack of these things is blind and cannot see afar off and has forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Amen, amen. Okay, so uh, moving along um, over there, there is, then, uh, th th there is a description of a condition, but there is a remedy also. Mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and that is the beauty of the everlasting gospel. The gospel doesn't just, it's like a good physician. You know, they just not only give us our you know, physical condition, but they say, you know what? But now there is this remedy, this medicine that will, uh, you know, you'll be healing, you'll be healed from those spiritual con conditions. And, and, and which are those uh, remedies that the good physician bring in there? Revelation yeah. 3, 18 and 19. Can you read it, please? I yes. counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, mm. and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed. Mm -hmm. and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. And anoint thine eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Mm -hmm. Okay, th this is important. And I don't want to miss our friends to miss any of that. Because we will see that if we will pay attention to the warning that is been given of our, or our condition, and we'll take hold of that special medicine, Everything will be okay. We'll have to get there right back. Listen to this. Paul and Jesus both predict that the church of God becomes a force against God. The radical faith that Jesus taught had become the official religion of the empire that murdered him. The speed with which the early church tobogganed into apostasy will take your breath away. Welcome back. Pastor Barry, I know you want to say something just before we go into what I call the solution for our condition, the medicine for our condition. You, you want to expand a little more yeah, on our condition. Before you go there, I just want you to look at this with me. 
The Bible says, it says they're poor, they're blind, but they're wretched, miserable, and naked. Uh, we talked about blind, but le- what does it mean to be wretched? Okay. Because this is a condition that a lot of people don't consider themselves in. But Paul talks about it in Romans chapter 7, verses, uh, t- verse 24. Look what Paul said. Wretched is only mentioned twice in the Bible. And I want you to notice this once in the New Testament. Notice it very carefully, Romans 7. 7.24? Uh-huh. Romans okay. 7.24. Look what the Bible says here. Romans 7.24. It says here, Oh, what? Oh, wretched. wretched man. Oh, wretched man that I am. Now, notice something very carefully about this text. He says, Oh, wretched man that I am, who can what? Deliver me. Who can deliver me from the body of this death? Mm. So, first of all, Paul realized his own he, his own self-righteousness could not merit him favor with God. Mm. And wretched is a condition where, and that is a lukewarm condition. Mm. It's, a, it's a condition where you know what's right, but you don't have the power to perform it. Mm. That is what a wretched condition is. In fact, mm. but it's also a self-righteous condition as well. In Numbers chapter 11, verse 13 through 15, listen what Moses said. In Numbers chapter 11, verses 13 through 15, I believe. Look what it says. Look what Moses said here concerning his death and his time. Look at here. I believe that's what I want. It says here, 11, 13 through 15. It says, when should I have flesh to give all this people? For they weep unto me, saying, give us flesh that we may eat. Am I not, it says, I am not able to bear all this people alone. Because it is too heavy for me. Now, I want you to notice very carefully, verse 15. And if thou deal thus with me, kill me, I pray thee, out of thy, out, it says, out of hand, if I have found favor in thy sight, and let me not see my what? Wretchedness. My wretchedness. Mm. Moses saw his own self righteous condition, a self righteous state of wretchedness. So self-righteous states are states of wretchedness, and that's one aspect. And the other aspect of wretchedness is knowing what's right from truth from an intellectual standpoint, but not being able to perform it in a daily lifestyle. Mm. And a lot of people are in this condition. It says here, going on in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 19, look what the Bible says there in 1 Corinthians 15, 19, right quick. So we're going to find that wretched means knowing what's right and not able to perform it or having a state of being in a state of self-righteousness mm. and not seeing your need. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. Oh, so what is it now? If we have hope only in this life, meaning that if we don't have any hope for the life to what? To come. come, even though we claim we're in Jesus, then we above all men are most what? Miserable. miserable. So miserable means only having hope for this life because you can't, you're not sure that you're going to overcome sin and that Jesus can really give you the power to overcome. So you're in a state where you're not sure. So you're really going to church, but you're in a miserable condition. Right. But you know what? Paul, uh, right there inspired by the Holy Spirit, give us the answer on verse 25 mm-hmm. uh, of the book of Romans chapter 7, verse 25. Mm-hmm. Can you read it, please, Patrick? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. Okay. What does that mean? But but, but then the the next chapter... But before you go there, before you go there, this condition, this wretched condition of self-righteousness is also the condition, creates a condition where a person believes that they can be one saved, and always saved. Right. Because it's a self-righteous mm-hmm. condition. It is not a condition where one sees the need for Christ. Mm. Now, now that you bring this up, is there such a thing in the Bible that you can say, you know, once I've been in, in a connection with Christ, in the saving relationship with Him, it doesn't matter, you know, what might happen to me. It doesn't matter what else, uh, the, the life that I can live. Uh, I'm always going to be saved. What did Jesus spoke about this? In the book of Matthew, chapter 24, verse 13, I believe it is. Let's go quickly in there. Because Jesus very clearly explained to us 
that in order for us to be not to live in that self-righteousness condition or life because that's the problem of Laodicea. Do you, do you have it, Brother Patrick? 24, Matthew 24, 13. 13 but yes. he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Okay, so what is the condition that Jesus set, for, uh, set up for each one of us to be saved? To endure up to how long? To the end. Up to the end. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 and 2. Paul and uh, my brother uh, Barry, Pastor Barry, John 8, 31. Okay. Or, 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 or let's continue with Paul. Hebrew chapter 10, verse 38 to, th to 39. Hebrew chapter 10, and then Brother Patrick. Let's go ahead because I hear more and more good friends, good people, good Christian, I should say. But they say, you know what? But I don't need to worry about, you know, every Sabbath, you know, keeping the Sabbath. I don't have to worry about, I don't have that burden, they say, keeping the commandments of God. Because I was saved 10 years ago already. No, that's not what the Word of God teach. Um, which text do you have? 1 Corinthians 15. And one, 1 and 2. Okay. Verses 1 and 2. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, uh -huh. by which also ye are saved, if, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. So what is the condition that Paul present over there? To keep believing the if, Word of God. Yes, the gospel will save all of us only if we will keep in that gospel. It, re it requires consistency and consistent right. surrender and consecration. That's enduring unto the end. Because in Hebrews, that's right. in Hebrews 10, 38 and 39, right. now just that not a just shall live by faith. Mm. Notice it didn't say the just shall live or the just shall be saved forever. Forever, right. It right. said the just shall live by faith. Right. But if any man draw back, meaning if he begins to backslide. Right, backsliding. Okay. All right. Yeah. Now he believes in Jesus, right. but he starts backsliding. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. Uh -huh. But we are not of them who draw back unto uh -huh. perdition. Uh -huh. Notice that you can believe in Jesus mm -hmm. and you can draw back and you can draw back all the way to perdition or to right. destruction. That's right. That's and right. be lost. Right. Because it says, but of them, it says here, but we are not them that draw back, but of them that believe unto the saving of soul. Now, if, that, if you were once saved, always saved, then Ezekiel 33 shouldn't be written. Right. Because That's right. Ezekiel 33 says, but if the watchman see the sword come. Now, he's talking about for the people in God's house. Right, right, right. It says here, but blow not the trumpet and the people be not warned. If the sword come and take any person from among them, he is taken in his iniquity, but his blood, meaning the life of the person, right. will be, his blood will I require at the watchman, meaning at the pastor's hands. Mm -hmm. So even a pastor that's teaching, once saved and always saved, that's impossible wow. because if one of his church members is lost, God said, I'm going to require his life at your hand. That means if he's lost, then the pastor who preached to him and told him a false teaching, he will be lost as well. But go on, it says here, so one more point it says here, and when I say to the wicked, O oh, oh, wicked man, thou shalt surely die, and if thou doest not speak to warn the wicked from his way, that that wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine hand. Notice again that even though you claim to be a Christian, you can die in iniquity if you choose to transgress God's law. And if you die in your iniquity, you will be lost. Because it says here, nevertheless, if thou warn the wicked of his way and turn from it, and if he do not turn from his way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. Wow. I mean, I think it's very clearly. And I know there are many ministers and priests that listen to these programs. Uh, across the nation through ra national radio program and, and TV programs. But there is a warning, I believe, for all of us as preachers over there. We might be even walking right with God. But if we don't rebuke, if we don't make sure, as you were mentioned, Pastor Barry, mm -hmm. that our people and the people will be turning their life into the truth of the everlasting gospel, we will be lost then because yes. their blood will come upon us. That's right. Brother uh, Pastor Barry, I mean, Brother Patrick. 
Well, Satan and his angels also show that once saved, not always saved. They were in heaven with God, but they left their, they were cast out of heaven because they chose to follow another way. And this has been a principle from but the beginning up to the end. No, the, no, God, let, let's confirm what Brother, okay. let's, well, let's confirm what Brother Patrick just said though for a moment because you know, a lot of people believe the devil will last forever, too, because <laughs> right. he was once saved, and he got cast out, but is he, is he always going to be around? Mm -hmm. Ezekiel chapter uh, 18, 17 says this. Notice what Ezekiel 17 says. Ezekiel 28. Ezekiel 28, 17. Look what the Bible says here. Look, in fact, verse uh, 18. Thou hast defiled thy sanctuaries by the multitude of thy iniquities. By iniquity of thy traffic, therefore will I bring a fire from the midst of thee, and it shall devour thee, and I will bring thee to ashes in the sight of all them that behold thee. Now God is talking about the destruction of Lucifer, mm. and then he tells him one other thing. He says, I will destroy thee, verse 16, by the multitude of thy merchandise, thou hast filled the midst of thee with violence, thou hast sinned. Therefore will I cast thee profane out the mountain of God. I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the thrones, the stones of fire. The devil and his angels will be destroyed Amen. for their sin. So well, they, if they're not once saved, always saved, and Jesus has brought redemption to the us with the condition that if we meet, if we love him, we will keep his commandments. Right. When Satan kept the commandments, he was saved. Right. But when he broke the commandments, he was lost. For sin originated with him in transgressing the law. Yes, and of course in Revelation, uh, chapter 20, verse 8 and 9, it, it speaks the same thing. Isn't it? Do you want to read it? Okay. Uh, 10 seconds. And shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them to battle mm -hmm. as the number of the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about in the beloved city. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. What means devour? Consume. 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 And Destroy. Be, be the book ashes. of Malachi speak about also Malachi that neither root, root or branches branch. will be left. I believe the Bible is very clearly. Now, I know we will have to uh, pick up because this issue about the once safe, always safe has been spread as a wildfire through Christianity. And we need to warn the people in love. Unfortunately, our time is up, but I need to reminds all our friends out there we love you and in the meantime we want to keep you safe and may god bless you all our voice of the eternal gospel family thanks you for joining us generous contributors like you keep us broadcasting prayerfully consider supporting this ministry donations are tax deductible and can be sent to voice of the eternal gospel P.O. Box 15138, West Palm Beach, Florida, 33416. Our phone number is 1-866-7th-DAY-2. That's 1-866-784-3292. And our web address is voiceoftheeternalgospel.com.